Hey, good morning. Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining me for our daily bread. Um, it's really a privilege to once again come together. Remember how powerful it is to be connected and to stay connected. Jesus said, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. So there's something powerful about us connecting. There's something powerful about us staying connected. One can put a thousand to flight, two can put ten thousand to flight. There's something powerful about um, what it says in in Ecclesiastes chapter four. I think it's verse nine or ten. It says, woe to the one who falls when he's alone. He has no one to pick him up. Woe to the one who falls when he's alone. He has no one to pick him up. This is why we this is why God's idea of the church is so powerful. This is why we connect through the church body and um, and the power of connection is vital. It's not how we connect. It's that we connect how we connect varies. We will get back to connecting in our regular services on site. But right now we have the opportunity to connect online and uh, we need to take full advantage of this opportunity by staying connected and using technology as the means by which um, we stay connected. So welcome everybody to our daily bread and uh, I encourage you to be planted in the house of God. Like we I think it's for the last 60 days or so that we've been coming live every day to bring to you fresh bread from God's word and to bring to you fresh encouragement. And sometimes we talk about things that aren't easy to talk about. Sometimes we talk about things that we have differences about, but it's OK to have differences without division. Remember, the Bible says, let there be no division, no division among you. It doesn't say let there be no differences among you. That's the whole beauty of that God gives to every man a gift. Everybody has a gift. Everybody has a talent. Everybody has um, a unique personality, a unique fingerprint, a unique destiny. So differences are something God glorifies in the Bible. Divisions are something that Satan glorifies. Satan uh, creates division, divisiveness. Do you know that, in fact, um, the word for devil, Diablo, Diablos in um, in the Greek, you know, for those of you that are Spanish speaking, you know, Diablo is the name devils, the word devil. So we got the word devil in Greek, Diablos, and it comes from two Greek words, dia and balos. And the Bible says that in first Corinthians, chapter two, that do not be deceived, for we know the schemes of the devil. We know the schemes. We know the plots. We know the we know what the devil is up to. He said, we know the schemes of the devil and the word devil, breaking it down into two words, dia and balos. Hope you didn't mind a, a Bible teaching lesson going deep on a word here. But the word devil is dia balos. Dia comes from the word is where we get the word diameter from. And it's a circle or a diameter and or to um, and, and balos is the, where we get the word ball from. It's to throw. So it's to throw and dia diameter. It's to penetrate. So it's to throw accusations. This is what the word devil actually means. The one who throws accusations at until he penetrates. So the word dia is the is the the hole or the penetration. And the word balos is to throw or to hurl. So what does Satan do? How does Satan operate? He accuses and accuses. The Bible says in Revelation, chapter 12, verse 10 and 11, he accuses God's people day and night because he is throwing accusations at you. You're not enough. You're not as good as somebody else. You're inferior. You'll never recover. You'll never overcome this. You aren't as smart. You aren't as talented. You aren't as intelligent. You aren't as godly. You aren't as holy. That is the continual hurling of accusations that Satan uh, levels you with until he penetrates. So he balos dia dia balos. He throws accusations at you until he penetrates until he completely intrudes into your soul and there he releases explosive power of darkness 
once penetrated by accusing thoughts. This is why it is so vitally important that we learn to throw down the accusations of the devil through. This is what spiritual warfare is. It's to cast down the imaginations and the thoughts that are contrary to who you are in Christ, the thoughts that are disobedient to Christ in Second Corinthians, Chapter 10, he says we are taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. That doesn't mean that doesn't he's not talking about our our obedience or obedient behavior there. He's talking about that any thought that comes against what Jesus did for you, any thought that puts in question the finished work of the cross, any thought that is contrary to what Jesus Christ has done for you, that is what uh, that is what a disobedient thought is, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience to the obedience of Christ or every thought has to submit to what Jesus has done for you. Every thought has to submit to what the cross has accomplished in your life. Every thought. So any thought that says to you, you're not enough, you're not this, you're not that. And so I want to talk a little bit about that today. And uh, by the way, just a shout out to all you guys who are watching today. Thanks for thanks for being online with me. And um, of course, don't forget also that we will um, we will be gathering tonight at 7 p.m. Let me see if I can get uh, get your guys names up here. Not on that. Not on that site. OK, try this one. So join me tonight at 7 p.m. for our uh, online Wednesday night Bible study service. Can't wait to be with you then. But uh, just a shout out to some of you guys, uh, Shirley from the Cayman Islands, Joanne from the UK, uh, Sharanika Schmar. Smara Nika from India. Sorry, I butchered that one up. Margaret from Kenya, Marina from South Africa, June from the Philippines. I wonder if that's my June, my friend June Escozar, Eunice from Malaysia, uh, Grace from Indonesia, Kristen from Texas, Amber from Colorado, Florence. God bless you, Florence from New York, Virginia from California. Thanks for tuning in, Deborah from Kentucky, from Kentucky. And um, I really appreciate you guys joining joining in today on the broadcast and I'm going to get I'm not going to lose my train of thought. Don't worry. Uh, <laughs> this really matters to me what we're talking about, because I really believe that the attack against our soul is um, is what Satan is after. He wants to attack your soul until he penetrates and gets a stronghold in your soul. That's what spiritual warfare is. Spiritual warfare is pulling down thoughts that are contrary to what Jesus did for us, pulling down thoughts that are contrary to who you are in Christ. Any thought that's not obedient to Christ, not obedient to who you are in Christ, not obedient to what Jesus Christ did for you. The thief came to steal. The thief came to steal, kill and destroy. But Jesus said, but I have come that you would have life in abundance to the full till it overflows. So anything contrary to what Jesus did for you is what we need to take captive. And those are the thoughts that Satan tries to get into your mind and penetrate so he can get a stronghold in your life, because as a man thinks, so is he. Right. But uh, shout out also to Shirley, to Debbie, to uh, Amy from Brazil, to Pam, to Claire, Kristen. G God bless you guys. Max, thanks for watching today. C catch you. Thank you, Judith. Great to have you guys. Arlene, um, Barbara. Cassandra, Linda, thanks so much. Tony, uh, Terry, appreciate you guys. Appreciate you um, joining me every time and being a part of this, man. It means so much. Uh, Barb from Twinsburg, Ohio, Judith from New York, Pastor Ratnam from India, uh, Arlene, Arlene, God bless you. Cindy, God bless you. Monica, Theodora, you guys are the best. Love you guys so much. Um, Wow, is um, we have closed captioning on this? It's awesome. <laughs> is that always on here? It's auto, but it, it just whatever platform. 
it's auto closed captioning on Facebook at least. That's pretty cool. Um, hey, tell a friend to get in here and learn how to win in spiritual warfare. Call them up, tell them to go to our Facebook page or to go to our YouTube page or to go to our Instagram live page at Gregory Dickow. Come on, let's get some let's get into this thing. By the way, I want to send you this gift. Precious promises of the blood of Jesus. The first month of um, of this uh, this this crisis that we've been in, I was given away the book, um, the the one the one on which one was it? 30 days of rest. Thank you. 30 days of rest. It was 30 pearls of pure grace. And man, I love that book. And um, and I hope you guys took advantage of that. Um, and you know what? I think I don't know what it's what our website says. It was free before. Now, it, I don't know if it might be five bucks or ten bucks, whatever it is. You're welcome to get it. I'm not trying to sell anything. I not I don't need anything. I don't really want anything other than for you to partner with me to help reach more people and to get to help more people who are in crisis. But I don't need anything. Um, and this book is absolutely free is my gift to you. Precious promises of the blood of Jesus. Go to Gregory slash promises, Gregory slash promises. And let me send you this book absolutely free. If you want to download the if you want to get this one in paperback, it's 30 days, 30 promises of the blood of Jesus. If you want the, the newest one, I revised it and made it into a seven day journey and went more in depth for each day. And that's available online also, but it's only available through downloading it. OK, and it is free. I want you to have that for free as well. I want you to have this for free. I'll send it to you absolutely as my gift. If when you order it for free, no strings attached, if you'd like to help with our outreach in our crisis relief fund, which on 100 percent of it goes to crisis relief, none of it goes to any administrative costs or anything like that, 100 percent of what you would give would go to crisis relief and it's not required and you don't need to and you don't have to and you don't need to be ashamed of not being able to or not wanting to. I want to give this to you free, period. And if you can be a blessing back, great. Thank you. If you can't be, no problem. Let me send this to you as my gift anyway. OK, so we're all about giving stuff away for free here. And um, I want to drill down on this um, this concept of uh, what what causes so much um, of the violence in the world, what causes so much of the of the of the problems in the world, it really stems from. And if I if I could if I can repeat something that I said to you yesterday, remember, we looked in Revelation chapter one, verses five and six, it says um, to him who loved us, Jesus, Jesus, who loved us, and washed us in his own blood and made us kings and priests before God. He made us kings and priests before God. And um, the idea that, number one, what God feels about you is love. Number two, what God did for you is he paid for your sins and mine as well. And number three, what God made you. So how God feels about you, love what he did for you, washed you in his own blood and what he has made you a king and a priest. And I'm on chapter eight of my book. Um, right now it's titled Soul, Soul Power. I'm, I'm writing this book in slow motion, it feels like. But uh, but I am getting it done. And there's, I think, 15 chapters and I'm on chapter eight. And um, chapter eight is called Let No One Take Your Crown. Let no one take your crown. And it's all about destroying inferiority. And um, because a sense of inferiority, a sense of being less than is what is, is the root cause to so many problems in our lives and in our relationships. So when, if I can get this point across to you, when Adam and Eve sinned, God said from now on, the result of their sin was a curse. And I believe the curse that sin brought into existence, into the world and into mankind is the curse of inferiority or the curse of feeling less than. And so, you know, when we read the scripture in um, Romans 3, 23, it says, for all have sinned 
and fallen short of the glory of God. The word short there is actually the word for inferior. It comes from the word inferior. The original language in Greek or Aramaic is all have sinned and therefore become inferior, become less than, become smaller than all that God intended for them to the glory of God. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The glory, the word glory means uh, to be all that God intended you to be. There's several, several definitions for the word glory. But in this case, in this context, it means to be all that God intended for you to be. So to the Bible says we've all sinned and become inferior to all that God intended us to be. So that's why I titled my my chapter. Let no one take your crown, because the Bible says that I, Jesus said this. He said, I am coming. But in the meantime, let no one take your crown. And when he was talking about that, he was talking about let no one take your sense of royalty from you. Let no one let no one take your sense of authority over your life. Let no one take your sense of who you are in Christ, seated with Christ in heavenly places above and not beneath the head and not the tail. Right. Bless coming in and bless going out. That's who you are. You and I are sons and daughters of God. And what Satan's selling is an inferiority complex. And every time in human history, every time in human history where mankind has tried to dominate another species, another uh, group of people, whenever man has tried to dominate another man, it's out of it's rooted in an inferiority complex. So the the person who feels inferior tries to behave superior by taking dom by dominating some other human soul to justify or to rationalize or to compensate for the feeling inside of that human soul, the feeling of inferiority. So the perfect example of this is Adam and Eve. So when Adam and Eve sinned, Eve, God said, the curse is now going to play out in your life where you you will desire to rule your husband. He said, your desire will be for your husband, but he shall rule over you. So God's not saying that Adam was supposed to rule over Eve. And he wasn't saying that Eve was supposed to have desire for Adam. Eve already had desire for Adam. But when you when you read the original language of your desire will be for your husband, it means your desire will be to rule your husband. There's there's it's not debatable. That's what the, that is, what the language actually says. The language of the Bible, the, the pure definition of Scripture, it says the actual translation says you your desire will be to rule over your husband, but he will rule over you. This is after they sin. So now prior to that, man and woman was equal, absolutely equal, perfect equality. So the result of Adam and Eve's sin was they fell short of or they became inferior to all that God intended them to be. Are, are you catching this? They became inferior to all that God intended them to be. And they reproduced inferiority into the earth, a sense of being less than. And ever since that time. So he said, your desire is going to be to rule over over your husband, but he's going to end up ruling over you. Do you see both of those things are a part of the curse of Adam and Eve's sin? All ever all anything ever is when when one group tries to dominate another or when one person tries to dominate another like a bully. Take a bully, for example. We're all against bullying and a bully is someone who feels on the inside in inferior but has to behave in such a way that it co temporarily compensates for his feeling of inferiority by bullying someone else, by dominating somebody else, by having a false sense of superiority to cover up his true sense of inferiority. That's what I believe caused 
the the Jewish Holocaust, uh, the 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 false sense of superiority that Hitler had that was rooted in a deep inferiority complex and all all people that are domineering towards others there, they become domineering because it is a it is a um, it is a, a defense mechanism to compensate for their sense of inferiority. So you can see slavery, you can see the Jews being enslaved in 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 Egypt. You can see the Jewish people being um, dominated over in and brutally murdered in the Holocaust. You can see slavery in America and other parts of the world where there has been slavery because America America wasn't the only country that participated in slavery in its in its inception. It doesn't justify it, but slavery has been all over the world from the beginning of Adam and Eve's sin. It is the result of one person or one group trying to dominate another to compensate for their sense of inferiority. So when you say oh, what, you know, a white supremacist, which is evil in any in any in any setting is compensating for you might think that person thinks he's superior. But the, the truth of the matter is that person feels inferior. So he must find a way to exert superiority to compensate for. And I'm not saying there's it's ever justifiable. It's, it's never justified. I'm telling you where it came from, Adam and Eve. And the only way for us to root it out is to discover biblical equality and biblical equality is that in Christ we can find this in Colossians, we can find this in Galatians, we can find this in Ephesians in Christ. There is no longer any um, any partiality in Christ. There is no longer any inferiority in Christ. There is only equality. The Bible says for for in Christ, there is neither Jew nor Greek nor male nor female. Now we know there's still male and female in the earth. So what does Paul mean when he says in Christ, there's neither male nor female? What Paul means is exactly what God gave mankind it, before Adam and Eve sinned was he made man and woman equal. He made mankind equal. There is no superior race. There's only people that are trying to compensate for their inferiority by exerting superiority. So whether that played out, whether that played out in this recent killing in Minneapolis, whether it played out or Minnesota, wherever that is, whether that played out in other killings that have taken place, whether it played out in slavery, whether it played out in 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 um, not Nazi Germany. These are all inferiority complex people that have had to exert some form of superiority to compensate for their inferiority. The only cure for that is being in Christ. The only cure for that is understanding human dignity and understanding that God raises us all up equally. So the pastor is not above the people. I'm equal with you in Christ. Now, I have a different function to teach you, to lead you, to feed you, um, but and to have biblical authority which should never be abused. And we see whether it's in government or whether it's in the police department or whether it's in politicians. So often people that are in positions of power don't have the character to match the position that they're in of leadership. So this is what causes um, an inferiority. This is what causes superiority and this is what causes so much racism. This is what causes so much um, abuse and mistreatment of other human beings. See, every human is equal in God. Everyone doesn't matter if you're poor, if you're rich, white or black, um, male or female. So why all the inequality in the world? Because we, we are judging people according to the flesh that Paul says in Second Corinthians, Chapter five, I no longer will judge anyone according to the flesh, but rather we are all found to be equal in Christ, in Christ. So I break the power of that inferiority complex over you in the name of Jesus. I break the power of that complex of feeling less than 
feeling smaller than feeling not as smart as in the name of Jesus, I break that off of you. There is no superior race. We are equal in Christ. And we need to treat one another. As equal in Christ. And when we start seeing ourselves the way God sees us, we'll start seeing others the way God sees them. And it will be equal and it will be with honor and it will be with dignity and it will be with peace and kindness. Lord, in the name of Jesus. We thank you that we have the power and authority over the spirit of violence, over the spirit of hate, over the spirit of racism. We bind it in Jesus name. And Lord, we declare over this nation and any nation watching this, we declare biblical equality to begin to arise in the hearts and minds of your people to become the leaders of those nations and this nation so that righteousness will will rule this nation once again, that the righteousness that the righteous shall rule and the wicked, the wicked shall truly submit to the righteousness of God in Jesus name. Amen. Well, there's a lot more to be said about that, and I hope that you're encouraged by that and I hope you'll find yourself hidden in Christ, equal in Christ. You have authority over the devil and that's our enemy, not one another. Love your neighbor and cast out the devil. (laughs) Don't cast out your neighbor and love the devil. Let's love our neighbor and cast out the devil. Let's love our neighbor and pull down the strongholds of the devil. Let's love our neighbor and find the accuser and the accusations of the enemy against us and tear down those accusations in Jesus name. 